today I'd like to share some tips with you on coloring animal fur with colored pencils over a grayscale coloring book page. This is my original painting of a kitten converted to grayscale for my new coloring book, Baby Animals. Look for a flip through of the book on my YouTube channel. I'll be working in these gloves. Great for arthritis and for keeping your hands clean. So let's start. Here's the kitten. Now the first thing I'd like to talk about is actually not colored pencils, but what you can do with a gel pen. You can actually start by adding things like whiskers. I already had added his whiskers on his other side and now I'm adding them here. You can also add the whiskers at the end, but it's a little easier to add them before you put color on the page. Um, so, and, and sometimes I'll do it both ways and, and add more at the end, but there you have it, some little whiskers. And you can add more things. You could add little white hairs. Um, later I'm gonna add um, hairs to his ears too. But I thought I'd show you the colors that I'm going to use for this kitten. So he's a tabby, but he's got a lot of um, orangey brown um, areas. And I just think this is one of the prettiest colors of, of cats. So I'm going to uh, use that as a guide to inspire the colors that I'm going to choose. Now, one of the main colors for the fur that I'm going to use is a color called goldenrod. Now I'm putting it on in a very light layer. If you're not familiar with grayscale coloring, uh, I assume most of you probably are by now, but if you are not, um, you want to do what's called layering. And layering is basically coloring an area with a very light hand you notice there's hardly any color showing here yet. So the trick is not to bear down too hard. Once you bear down really hard, you won't be able to go over that area again easily. And that's something that you want to save for the end because when you bear down hard, you burnish all the colors together and smooth them out. But you don't want to do that right away. So you want to do what's called layering. <clears throat> So I'm going to go over um, pretty much the entire the entire pictures with uh, with this color. Again, it's goldenrod, and the colors will be listed at the bottom uh, the, in the description. So keep scrolling through, and you'll see see the colors listed that I'm going to use for this kitten. <clears throat> so I go over everything, including the dark areas, including any light areas, um, and, and in general, you want you, you want to have not a super detailed every single hair um, illuminated here. You know, this is more of a, you know, a painted look instead of a photographic look. So we're not simulating a photograph per se. We're, we're coloring a piece of art. So the finished product will look more like a painting uh, than a photograph. So go in between uh, the, the whiskers and I'm adding now a second coat on, on some of these areas and I'll, I'll, I'll do a number of coats of this of this color. So just gently going over it, circular motion. Some people do really little tiny circles um, I find if you're if you're using a light hand, uh, it, there's more leeway in terms of the the strokes that you use because you're not putting on a thick li thick lines. So you can use a, a a bit more of a almost a sketchy approach. And as long as you're going over the area and coloring it, um, it's fine. And, 
you know, cats are, you know, have multicolored fur, so even going over it um, a little irregularly isn't a bad thing. Now his muzzle is the place where he's got that beautiful, beautiful little orange um, spot. So um, his muzzle, muzzle in the top of his nose, I'm going to layer in um, quite a few more layers over and over and over here so that it builds up and he's got that beautiful little, you know, brighter brown nose and, and his little cheeks. Hmm. So now I'm going to use uh, sepia. I don't use black right away for the for the darkest um, areas, uh, for like the stripes, for instance. Um, I I like using sepia. It's a warm, uh, dark warm brown, and it um, I don't know. I just find you don't want to necessarily go too dark too fast. So this is a good. Um, it's a good compromise to not using black right away. I, I will go back in with some black later. Also, you can add um, here and there because, you know, as, as I said, this is not a photograph, so it doesn't show all the uh, every single fur, uh, little piece of fur, every single hair. So you can add, um, you know, your own extra little little hairs, too. And notice when I'm when I'm putting in the details here, that I'm uh, I'm using little strokes that simulate the hair, and that are going in the direction of where, how the hair is growing. So instead of I wouldn't be coloring this going across, I'm coloring it um, as his hair in the direction his hair is growing. And I decided just to add a little extra stripe there. You know, and you can do this on the other side too. I don't think I did. No but um, you could. And, and this is actually his, it's hard to tell, but that's his tail flopping off on the side of the, of the stool. <clears throat> now most cats that are this color have, um, have that pale ridge on the, um, the edge of their ear, and then the, the back of the ear in this color tabby is usually quite dark, and that's why I'm... <clears throat> doing it this way and and I'm just sort of flicking those extra little little uh, little hairs you know sort of starting in one direction and then sort of flicking it up um, so you can add uh, you can add more detail a little more a little more uh, little hairs here and there and here's the darkest um, his darkest points almost makes like a little M, and then you just sort of make up um, a symmetrical design up here of, of how the the fur might might go up. You know, every cat's a little different. Uh, they tend to be similar, but um, you know, not identical. There's a, there's many different different kinds of markings, but the back of the head tends to be when the cats start getting uh, darker toward the back of the head. So that's why I made that a bit darker. Now I'm outlining uh, the ears and just adding little hairs. Adding some accents. So this is grayscale. Um, it's not too, too dark. So I'm adding accents that are actually darker than, than the, the print, darker than the dark print. So I'm outlining the eyes with, with this sepia pencil. And I'll go back and color the eyes in, in a few minutes. <clears throat> Outlining his nose. I'll go back in with black to really pop that nose later. So this is a light umber, and I'm going to go over all the the main cat color with with this with this light umber. Sort of layer layering on top. This 
This is actually one of the most complicated um, kinds of cats to color. Uh, you know, a yellow tabby would be would be much simpler. But I just love this color cat. It's I've had many cats this color. Um, a Maine Coon, and then actually right now I have two cats that are similar color. They're a little bit more gray than this. The Maine Coon had had more brown in him. But um, but I just love this color cat. I love the little um, the little brown nose that he has that they have. So for the rough here, which is kind of a white a white rough, um, so I'm going from underneath and I'm accenting. Um, I'm sort of creating the shadow of the um, of those. Um, of the fur that's coming out, so I'm, I'm coloring, sort of adding the detail in and defining, defining those colors more. So again, sort of starting at the bottom and sort of flicking up, so it gives it um, a natural, a natural look. Accenting corners of the eyes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I was going to do this in the beginning, and I forgot to add the add the little hairs in his ear. Ears. Ears are probably one of the hardest things to do in a cat, and if you understand that the um, the little white hairs that all the cats have come from that inner part of the ear all the way up. So that's where they grow from. So if you have your strokes going from that direction, you can simulate pretty simply. I mean, it's not photorealistic, but you can simulate the, the look of, of the, the fur in the ear. So a lot of these colored cats actually don't have pure, pure white points. A lot of them are, are kind of have cream colored uh, ruffs and, and points. So I'm gonna add, uh, not cream, but it's, um, what is it? Oh gosh, this is, let me find this color. Beige. Okay. I knew I had it. <clears throat> this is beige. So this gives a nice, you know, just a bit of a warm feeling to the his white points. You don't absolutely have to do this if you prefer the pure white. Um, you, know, you can color this kit in any way you want. This is just one way of doing it. So. Um, so I use beige for the light parts, and then for the shadow areas, um, I'm going to use um, ginger root. And here's um, here's more beige. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. This is this is the ginger root. It's just a little darker than the beige, so it it's it's doing that transition from the light area into where his paw falls falls a little bit into shadow as it curls as it curls under. So that's um, that's ginger root. Now for the for the ears. Oh, no, I'm gonna go into the eyes now. And I'm using spring green. Cats probably don't have eyes that are quite this bright, but it's kind of fun to do bright green eyes. You could do bright blue eyes, sometimes they have gold eyes. Anyway, there's just a couple layers of spring green. 
and going back in with a slightly darker pencil just to make some nice um, nice little accent lines coming out from from the pupils and that's um, I think I used apple green for this one and also put a little bit in the shadow under his lid and then if you want to really spark up um, the eyes uh, a lot of times the bottom of the eye will have um, a very bright um, reflection and I used um, cream for that. Okay, on to, ooh, yeah, I just love this brown nose. I can't, can't resist making it even a little browner using burnt ochre and just feathering in a little bit of burnt ochre on his cheeks as well. And adding a little bit here and there to his fur. I think it's fun to have fur that's not just one color. That's, that's sort of more fun to, to sort of add in a lot of different colors. all right black so I do use some black and cat's eyes just look so dramatic if you use some pure black and sometimes you can if you want to really get um, get fancy you can flick up some little hairs So carefully copy the the area you've mapped out with the with the sepia adding black and pupils actually are oval but they come to a point at the bottom so I'm going to accent that so it's an oval but then comes to a point before it goes back up and Definitely leave those, um, leave the bright highlight, just leave it white. So again, I'm going to I'm gonna accent the nose again. So it, uh, two, notice like two curves for the top of the, the nose. And my favorite um, color for, for kitty noses, you can use pink, I suppose, or you know, some people use many different colors, but I personally like nectar. I think it makes a nice pink and then I'll add maybe a little bit of that brown the burnt ochre on the bottom where it's his nose is more in shadow and add that into his little his little lip as well and that color the same color nectar I'm using for the insides of his ears not all cats have pink ears. Um, some of them have gray inside their ears, but um, I always think pink ears look nice. Apologies for the my computer making noises. Hmm. I realize I didn't color the insides the tips of his ears and notice I'm just going I'm, I'm even going right over the white you know I don't have to worry that much about keeping that pristine you know this gives it a softer look and a, a, a little bit of that color on top of the white is not a bad thing <clears throat> so I'm going back over the ears now with with my original color uh, goldenrod and I'll also go back over it with um, with the beige color as well. Because the usually the, the insides of those ears, that, that little line, little rim, is usually fairly pale. 
This might be a little bigger than they usually are. Um, again, it's this is a this is a, a drawing or a painting, you know, not photograph. So a little bit of creative license. And if you want to accent um, some of the shadow areas, you could go back in with that with that warmer brown pencil, the burnt ochre. It's up to you. There's no one right way to do to do this, to do a cat. This is just one way. So you can experiment on your own and have fun with playing, playing with different things. I'm, I'm actually darkening up the, the back of the ears. Put some black on these eventually too. Adding in something. What am I adding? <clears throat> I'm just getting making that area a little softer. And going back in with a little bit more uh, white pencil. So you can go back and forth with the white pencil and the and using the gel pens, um, the white pencil um, will soften the lines of the gel pen. You know, sometimes the, those lines are a little hard. So the using a pencil on top of uh, lines that you've made with the gel pen um, can sort of soften it. So you can go back and forth. And now I'm adding um, some extra, some extra little little hairs um, from his ruff here. <clears throat> and burnishing this area with white. I'll go back in in a, in a few minutes and add some more hairs with a gel pen, which actually I kind of, in retrospect, um, because I'm doing a voiceover here, <clears throat> almost wish I hadn't done. I sort of was going a little wild with gel pen and uh, I think I might like it more at this stage where it's a, it's a bit softer. So I'll leave it up to you to see to see what you prefer and experiment you know this um, this image is free to download if you'd like to try it out so um, feel free I've done about four versions of this <laughs> and everyone comes out a little different yeah and you can even add um, little white for hairs and that's where actually I went wrong I added them in in the with a gel pen after this and I wasn't as pleased with it as I could have been and I thought gosh this may be just a little bit more col colorful you know it's probably not true to the actual color of the cat you know the cat probably is a little bit more of a gray brown but um i just thought i would do this and you know you you have creative license to make this cat any color you want you can make him blue but i do like uh i do like the warm brown i'm not going in too close to his nose I'm keeping that a little cool because I want the, the warmth of his nose to, to still really show. And if I went in too much with this really super close to the nose, then the whole thing would look um, th the same color brown and it wouldn't stand out as much as being <clears throat> that, that cool sort of orangey brown right, right in his little nose and, and uh, mouth area. Okay, so let's add some black. So I'm more or less going over the same areas um, and just deepening, deepening the shadows and the um, and its dark markings. 
because they really and, and cats are, are close to black in uh, in the tabby. So again, sort of following the direction that his hair is growing. strokes. And you can keep working on on fur pretty much forever. <laughs> um, so I'm just continuing to play with it a little more. <clears throat> Adding more black here and there, slowly building it up, and at the end I'll be, I think, actually taking some time off camera to, to work on this a little more. I don't want this video to last too, too long, so I'm going to keep it a little under a half an hour. Hmm. But you can see how you can noodle, noodle away at it. And if you do add those white whiskers, um, you might want to do this, which um, just really add a little more shadow in the in the white rough area um, around, you know, around those those whiskers, so they stand out a little more. I'm going in pretty loosely here. You can go in really a lot tighter um, with a really sharp pencil if you want to really define them. <clears throat> And adding a little shadow to the bottom. Again, you can you can noodle these things forever. I'm a very detail-oriented person. I love I love spending time on details. Um, so it's your preference. Now I thought I'd add a little a little warm uh, not warm but cool into the shadow area because that was a warm pencil. So just to mix it up a little and make it. Um, a little more interest, adding a little some blue, cloud blue, very pale. Some people add <clears throat> like a pale lavender into shadows, which is really pretty. Um, I haven't done that here, but you can. So there are many options for, especially for white, the culling the shadows of white. So there's a little bit of a close up how he's doing so far. And now I'm going to go offline and and work on this a little more and here here I'm back um, after after spending about an extra half hour on this so I went over um, actually added some little little hairs with a jelly jelly roll pen and now I'm softening them uh, with more of the goldenrod <clears throat> I added I added some more black um, stripes to him. I deepened um, deep in the black and deep in the black in the back of his head. Again, most uh, most tabbies have, um, you know, their their stripes are 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 black. So I'm simulating those with the black pencil, sort of defining his 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 paw there it was it was sort of lost in shadow. And I don't really know if this is the correct I don't have I don't have my photo reference for this anymore, so I'm sort of making this up. But um, you know, you can leave it as is. Again, I'm going in and, and defining the um, the whiskers a little more, um, and making the rough a little smaller by by adding my my main cat color <clears throat> in um, into this area, so that is you know those end whiskers um, really pop out more. So I'm getting a, maybe a little too crazy here with the details, but I just thought you thought I'd show you uh, what's possible. Um, you know how you can just pl keep playing as long as you like with these. Um, and you know the important thing is is to have fun with it. I, I like um, you know I like this last part where you really noodle and uh, and add that last sort of those last touches. So there's the kitty 
and he's uh, available as a free download. Uh, check in the comments. And here, here he is. And call the background as you like. And he's from my book, Puppies and Kittens, my new coloring book. And I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.